have you ever suffered for so long <laughs> that people start to look at you like girl what did you do to deserve this sort of suffering this sort of suffering is not of normal proportions i understand we go through it but man you really be going through it through it and they start to hypothesize that maybe it's karma maybe you did something to somebody and the chickens have come home to roost some start to say maybe it's a generational curse okay maybe this thing has to do with those who came before you and they have passed it down to you you know suffering can lead you to thinking things like that and as you sit down outside the voices that come from outside and you start to think about it somewhere in between the questions where is god and all of this and how long will this go on for you start to ask yourself why me and one thing I love about God is he will give you the answer if you ask the question. And he answers this question in John chapter 9. And I just want us to read that passage today. Not fully because time, but just to get the gist of what Jesus was teaching them with regards to the sufferings of this blind man. And so we will begin in verse 1. It says, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, and this is where, now I, I want to shout <laughs> like they do in the U.S. He answered by saying, it is not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Are you suffering? Are you going through it, loved one? Do you recognize that it is possible that what you're going through, you're going through it so that God's works and his glory may be displayed in you. In verse 4, he says, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with mud. It says he anointed them with mud and said to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sin. So he went and washed and came back see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not a man who used to sit and beg? Not only was he blind, he became a, a beggar because of his dis The neighbors said to him, sorry. This can't be him. They say, it is he. Some said, it is he. Some said, no, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then, how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. The same blind man went on to be brought before the Pharisees, if you continue down in this chapter, and they too asked him the question, how do you now see? They even called his parents because they said, we do not believe it possible for another man who was not seeing yesterday to be seeing today. But I want to focus mainly on, or rather, let's say, let me finish it off by saying that he continued to be proof, further proof of Christ's Godship to the Pharisees. So much so that they stopped concentrating on the miracle because itself, amongst themselves, they argued that how can somebody who's possessed by a demon be able to perform such miracles? They could see that this man, something is different about this Jesus, but they went on to accuse him for having healed the blind man on the Sabbath. So they completely missed the point. But this is the point I'm trying to make. The blind man was dealt a bad hand at birth. He was born blind and that meant it limited his livelihood immensely so much so that he became a beggar because he could not do anything without his in that time and so loved one i don't know what you're going through i don't know what bad hand you've been dealt but listen just as this blind man his circumstances that even led him to beg on the street can you imagine how hard that was even if we are driven in our own lives to be in dire circumstances like he was, when a Jesus comes into your life, he transforms the narrative of your story. And he says, you may have thought, or others may have thought that whatever's happening to you is because of some curse. 
because of something wrong you did, a sin you committed, or ones that the people who came before you and your family did. But when Jesus steps into your situation, he says that what you're going through is for the glory of God and his works to be revealed in you. That is what he's teaching us here. That some of our sufferings, yes, may be correction. Sometimes it may be <laughs> vengeance of the Lord. But sometimes you just go through things because the glory of the Lord will shine through your experience. I love how Paul writes. I think it's in Romans where he says, God comforts us so we're able to comfort other people. So as you go through this, what you're going through, trust me, one day you will share your testimony. And when you share it, you will be such a blessing to somebody who's going through something at that time that you're going through. Now. These lessons that you're learning the hard way through your season of suffering. And you can suffer in all areas of your life. You can suffer in parenthood. You can suffer in marriage. You can suffer at work. You can suffer in your emotional and mental well-being. You can suffer in, in friendships. In every area where you may be experiencing suffering, there's always a lesson to learn. And that lesson you not only learn for yourself and sometimes the hard way, but you learn so that you can share with those who are in the body one day to say, I walked through this challenge in this way. And in sharing your testimony, you will be a blessing to the children of God. And you will be a well of wisdom to help them navigate the similar situations as yours with more ease. And that in itself for me is so rewarding to know that I don't suffer in vain. I suffer so that my brothers and sisters do not have to suffer the way I suffered. Because what I learn, I will also impart part to them so loved one the good works of the lord are yet to be revealed through your circumstance i don't know if you're ready for it but now as you go through it pay attention pay attention to the lessons don't wallow too much in the heaviness of the challenge in fact cast your burdens onto the lord and have the energy to focus on the things that you need to learn take notes loved one you're about to share a testimony take copious notes loved one Learn as much as you can through this challenge. Learn how you can apply the word of God as you walk through this challenge. Learn what God says you must do and apply it so you can tell people who may go through what you're going through in the future that this is what God says and this is how I manage to navigate the situation in a godly manner. Stay obedient through it and trust you me. This scripture that says, God's glory and good works will be revealed in you, will become your testimony. That is my encouragement to you today. So loved one, it's heavy. Cast it onto the Lord. And as you cast, pay attention to what you're seeing and what you're learning and how you're doing things with the help of the Holy Spirit in a righteous and godly manner. And you will become a blessing to many generations to come. I believe in you. And God believes in you and he has entrusted this challenge to you because he knows that you will get the most out of it. You will be able to navigate it the, the best to share with people the way they need to hear it for themselves. So as you are being refined to be a blessing, exercise patience, never cease praying and continue to walk in obedience. I love you and I hope you have a lovely evening. See you yet again tomorrow with another scripture because that's how we roll.